just like to introduce myself. I'm Dave Adams. I'm the uh, team leader for process automation support here in Great Britain and Ireland <coughs> for Siemens. And uh, I'll be joining Dom in this presentation this morning, looking at uh, how we can support high performance operations, so how we can help operators in the control room. Um, and part of the focus of that is the advanced process graphic option for PCS 7 but as Dom will uh, show you that there's more to this topic than just uh, a simple product that you can apply and fix all these issues. So I'll hand back to Dom and he can uh, lead us through the uh, the first parts of the agenda. Cheers Dave. So I've introduced myself quite a lot over the last couple of weeks, but one thing I haven't really mentioned is that I'm also responsible for the S7400 and ET200 ISP product ranges and look after some of the marketing activities with the PCS7 business. But um, on today's presentation, it's going to be all about the advanced process graphics, also known as APG. And today I'm going to talk to you talk you through some of the background behind the application and why it's a useful tool and then Dave's going to show you some resources which you can look at and give you a live demo demonstration. So way before my time when plants didn't have a sophisticated control room full of flat panels, screens and computers, most plant control rooms were very analog. That would mean there would be loads of physical devices which would display levels, flows and trends using chart recorders. This meant that the operator's jobs was well considered in the original plant design so that physical devices would be brought and installed into cabinets for them to be effective in their jobs. However, today's new control rooms based on DCS are completely digital which means operators have the access to nearly all the valves and devices in their plant. This means they have comprehensive options for diagnosis and screens can easily be changed to customise to suit each operator. The, the downside of having all this freedom to visualise the plant can make the operating screens complex and confusing. On the screen above now, this is a typical plant which you can see a whole host of information which can be displayed and it's mainly alphanumeric. It doesn't always make the operator's job more effective as they're now being overloaded and rely on their know-how to control the plant. Technology orientated HMI design screens offer less support to help operators in their operating tasks and also requires a lot of mental attention which can be exhausting and lead to mistakes. So what does the operator operator actually do and how much time is available in the day for operating the system. This next slide is from Namor, who done a survey of a typical operator's day. As you can see, only 56% of their time is spent in front of the um, operating DCS monitors and only 23% of it is actually spent controlling the plant. The modern operator has to do other tasks such as generic PC admin, expert discussion, and all the others which are listed on this slide above. So as operators, their time is limited, so we want to be able to optimise the information they do see on screen so they can be effective. This next slide is from Exceda and the HSE, and it looks at the causes of human errors. So there's two types of errors. The first is inadvertent errors, which I like to call accidental, and then the second are deliberate ones. The accidental errors can be broken down into a further two types, one being doing errors, which are when you thought the right thing, but you performed the wrong action. And then there's thinking errors, which is when you do the wrong thing because your own thinking was wrong. The first type can be solved by better HMI design, and then the second type of error can be solved by improving the operator's mental model through training. The deliberate errors can be broken into three groups. Routine errors, which are things like routine shortcuts because the operators can be lazy. Situational errors, such as um, the operators might be having a bad day 
And finally, the exceptional area errors, which are caused by the operators purposely wanting to cause harm to the plant. These errors can be engineered out of the system by using comprehensive audit trails, user administration with permissions and well-designed control screens. So APG takes on the HMI concept and tries to get rid of all these errors by using smart HMI design. So this is a um, typical HMI screen up on, this, on the display here. Can you see where the alarm is on the page? There's actually an alarm in the top left of the page. With all the previous colors and information, it was impossible to see. This is just one way in which the APG library can clear up the display of the operator screen so they can only see relevant information and are less likely to make doing errors because of the overload of information. APG also has a loop-in function. PCS7 has this built in by default, so APG takes advantage of this function and allows the operator to navigate from its process overview picture straight down to the detailed displays. This makes the system easier to navigate and also provides a chance to for the operator to think about the decisions they are about to make before it's confirmed. This, this again minimizes the likelihood of doing errors. Spider plots and other bar graphs are another powerful feature of APG as they show the plan in relation to the actual operating limits of the process instead of the instrument's full range. They will show this in more detail in a couple of minutes, but essentially these graphics make operating the plant much easier as you can easily deduce where you should be operating the plant in regards to the process at hand. And it's much more easier to see trends over time when you're operating between two minimum and maximum limits. APG also builds on existing operator productivity tools in PCS7, such as the measuring point browser and the trend control, which are the two um, windows which are at the back of the free graphics. Um, as well as this, it also, like, it also adds the group view, which Dave will soon show, but these all allow the operator to easily access several important bits of information consecutively and help them carry out their job more effectively. So this next slide is about alarm management, and this is a massive topic by itself. Yesterday we had a presentation all to do with alarm management, which you can find on our website to get more information. But today we're taking more of the operator's perspective. So when you're taking the operator's perspective, alarm prioritization and alarm help text can really support the operators when they're encountered with an alarm. And APG helps in this because it prompts them to do the right thing, reducing the frequency of thinking errors. So at this point, like I've mentioned that operator training can eliminate thinking errors as well. So it wouldn't be a Siemens presentation if there was no mention of a digital twin. So this is a good point to mention Simit. In Simit, you can create a model of your plant to simulate it in extreme conditions. This can be a really effective tool because it allows operators the chance to train on a simulation of the plant and experience un unnatural, unexpected events so that when they're on the real plant, if they ever do encounter this, it's not the first time they have to deal with it. So this avoids them making errors for stuff they've never encountered before. So this can be like a really powerful tool and I'd really recommend maybe investing in this sort of software to be able to train your operators. And then there's the design of the control room. This also has an effect on the success of the operator's jobs. Although here at Siemens, we don't typically design our customers' physical control room layouts, we'd always want you to consider the optimum room layout for your operators to maximize their performance. 
So um, ergonom ergonomically designed control rooms have been proven to have a significant impact on the operator's success as the ease of looking at screens and having the relevant information and devices around you well positioned in your room can really help the operator do their job. So this is also one thing you should always consider when you're designing your control rooms and how your rooms laid out. So to summarize, the APG library can reduce errors by decreasing the amount of complexity and confusion on your plant. It does this by making it easier to navigate and provide you some and provide your operators support in their tasks. One of the biggest benefits of the APG library is that the ASM consortium has shown that it's that it improves the operator's performance between five and twelve percent, which can give you a significant co competitive advantage. So I know you're like burning to see this more in action. So I'd now like to hand over to Dave, who will be able to show this and give more meaning to what I've just said. You there, Dave? Thanks, Dom. Uh, I'm just going to switch screens and uh, take over from you. Um, so this was Dom's last slide, um, and as he said, the uh, yeah, there's significant opportunity here for productivity gains, and um, if we get the operators being more productive um, through better information on the displays and through optimizing their activities then that can lead to actual plant productivity improvements and obviously that's uh, money in the bank for uh, for uh, system owners so moving forward then we've we've said that apg is a uh, part of uh, or an addition to pcs7 which can really assist in this area um in regards to that Let's have a look at some of the, the background to APG. So APG itself uh, is an option for PCS7, and uh, it's an option which has been around since version 8.1. So it's uh, you know uh, five, six, seven years old, that sort of time frame. But actually, before that, it was part of uh, a project offering from our uh, uh, chemical and pharma competence center in Germany. So they they were um, offering this solution to their customers and that came under a broader branding and um, had the terminology HMI plus and uh, that HMI plus because it was part of the full um, project offering then did, for example, address things like the control room design and uh, the, the broader topic of, of the full uh, HMI design. But what was realized out of delivering these projects was that uh, there was scope to have uh, additional functionality added to the core PCS7 functionality and uh, APG was born. So APG, as we can see here, released in version 8.1 and has carried on with uh, additions to its functionality through the, the different versions moving forward. So where can we find out more about APG? Uh, following the uh, track I've taken in most of my tech talks, I'd uh, like to equip people to uh, find out more information. So we have uh, here on uh, the screen a URL in a browser and uh, what we can see here is that uh, I've got a very simple URL Siemens.com slash PCS7 and uh, when you then hit enter on that very simple URL it gets transformed into a more complete URL and we're taken to the uh, Siemens homepage for PCS7. So uh, just flicking from slides to uh, a real browser session now and in the PCS7 page, which has this kind of long vertical approach, um, we can see we can come down to more detailed information in the middle. And there's a, a breakdown in the middle of the PCS7 homepage here into some of the, the categories of products that make up the portfolio. And this section roughly mimics the available uh, PCS7 catalogs that uh, we 
make available to download and to use to support you in, in uh, putting together a solution. There's the system components catalog, which is all the core products of PCS7. So the uh, the controllers, the ASEs, the, the distributed IO and things, options like somatic batch, root control, but these are all the core functions of PCS7. Then we have a technology components catalog, which are some, some more uh, specific options that would be not necessarily used in all uh, applications. An APG you'll see here actually falls under the technology components catalog. And then we actually have a third catalog, which is the add-ons catalog. And, and this is a mixture of Siemens and third party add-ons, which have been uh, approved both in terms of the the product quality and their life cycle support and their customer support. But there's another section in this uh, web page which takes a, a, a slightly different view rather than looking at it from a catalogue perspective, looking at it from a, a, an operations perspective that the life cycle of a project and what we're talking about today, the high performance operations would fall under you know, operating, monitoring and alarm management. And we'll see here there's a, a another link to advanced process graphics. If I follow that link, then it takes us to a, a little uh, microsite for APG for the advanced process graphics. There's a bit more information here. There's a, a video you could uh, perhaps watch at a later time, an expansion on uh, some of the functionality. And uh, towards the bottom, there are links, as, as there are on, on most of these pages, to downloads, white papers, uh, catalogues, links to our support at services, which we'll come back to shortly. So if we were to download the technology components catalog, um, then in the technology components catalog, we can see that uh, under efficient process control, there is a section in the catalog describing APG. And uh, it's interesting to note that APG um, consists of a single part number, and that is uh, all the licensing you need for an entire project. So it doesn't matter how many controllers you've got, it doesn't matter how many um, operator stations and engineering stations you've got, you would simply procure the one license there, um, and that one license would uh, give you the, the functionality for all the stations in, in question. So that's the catalog, the web page, examples of, of resources that are available to you for, uh, for kind of pre-sales information. So if you move forward then and, and, and look at where you can get more detailed information, application support and the product support itself, then we have another um, URL here, which is the um, Siemens.com slash PCS7 manuals. And this manuals URL again transforms into a, a, a more complete URL and uh, that takes us to the, um, the, the manual area, the technical documentation for PCS7. And uh, this particular product would come in different versions. As I say, it's, it's been available for, for different versions, but let's focus on the latest version. And for version 9 Service Pack 2, um, it is a product. If we look under products, it's, it's one of our engineering tools. And so we've got uh, a link here to um, the APG for optimized process visualization. Now, although we're looking at PCS7 9 Service Pack 2. The APG component is 9 Service Pack 1, but we can follow the link to the manual. And uh, here we can see there are uh, options for different versions of the manual. But if we take the most recent one, we can download that. And uh, that will uh, download the manual. We can open that. And here we've got a, the documentation for APG. If I was to uh, just step back into service and support, this manual has come from the Siemens Industry Online Support site, what we refer to as SIOS, S-I-O-S, Siemens Industry Online Support. And if you're looking for support uh, on any of our automation products, this is the place to come. And if you go to the home page, 
a uh, very useful um, facility that's been added relatively recently is this uh, important topics at a glance. If I follow that link, that will take me to an overview of various different products. We've got things like Simit, which uh, Dom alluded to as, as the uh, simulation tool that can help with operator training and uh, help with addressing those uh, thinking errors which can affect the productivity and the performance of the operator. Uh, there's links to information about Comos for helping with the plant design. Um, obviously we are focused here on PCS7, so if I go to the PCS7 uh, overview, then this has uh, links to lots of different information about different aspects of PCS7. And uh, there is a breakdown of links to things like the product release information. You could choose a particular version and you'll get a filtered view from, from CIOS of topics of interest for that specific version. It's information about software updates that are available. And then as we come a bit further down, we've got uh, some links to application guides and application examples and, and uh, templates and so on. If I just do a search in here for process graphics, see there's a link here to an application example for the integration of advanced process graphics APG in PCS7. And uh, I'd certainly recommend uh, taking a look at that if this is a, a topic you'd, you'd like to follow further in the future. So let's uh, return to the slides and uh, we've got the documentation there and here we've just got a uh, a summary of some of that information. So I've got a, a link to the, the technology catalogue, a link to the uh, release information about APG version 9. There is a service pack and uh, if you were to go down the route of ordering APG, what would you would find is you would have delivered the version 9 and then you would need to go to the uh, link here to download the service pack to add to that to bring the, the system right up to date. And then there's the link to the application note. So um, that's information about a lot of the sources of information. And uh, now it's really time to have a look at the product. So let's go live. And Hopefully, I should be able to access my PCS7 virtual machine where uh, I'm running a, a various aspects of PCS7 in, in, a, in a demo. And as I said, the APG um, is something which is an addition to the engineering. So you, you buy the APG license, that is uh, that supplies the library of building blocks and, and WinCC scripts for the OS to allow APG to function for you. And uh, you would therefore install it on the engineering station. And then once it's installed on the engineering station, you can use the supplied components to build into your process screens and to update the uh, configuration of the OS servers so that the uh, screens that appear on the operator stations are going to be more helpful for the operators. And one of the things that uh, Don mentioned was the uh, the overview type devices, the bars and the spider plots, which really help operators to see whether the plant is operating within the optimum uh, performance limits at that point in time. And uh, these are basically showing standard PCS7 process information. So you'll see here we've got a PID loop and the, uh, the this particular leg of the spider's web plot um, is linked to the PV of the uh, PID. But what you find then is that it's customized in a, a process specific, process oriented and, and perhaps task, current task specific way. So that rather than the leg of the uh, spider plot being the full operating range of that uh, instrument, so maybe it's a, 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 a flow transmitter and it's uh, it can the, the actual transmitter might be a, a not to 100 litres per second transmitter. But if for the current 
product transfer we're doing at the moment, our, our critical operating window is 40 to 43 litres per second, then we can make this blue bar range here, 40 to 43, and we can make the whole leg maybe only 20 to 50. So you've got the opportunity with APG, whether it's in the spider plot or whether it's in these bars, to, to really home in on your current operating window and make it context sensitive for the operator. And uh, that allows him not to be having to think about all of this context information, but to uh, very quickly be able to derive whether things are right or wrong. If there's an issue, then uh, Dom mentioned loop in alarm, this operator guidance principle, and uh, you can then right click on the leg of the plot and it will jump you into the process screen that's relevant. And in the normal PCS7 loop and alarm way, you'll get the blue um, or cyan highlight around the block icon of the object. Uh, and here we see a, a kind of classic PNID derived process screen with masses of information, lots of uh, um, color going on, potentially making it rather difficult to see exactly what's happening. So we can then look at uh, an APG level two picture, <clears throat> which tries to present this same piece of plant, but in a more useful contextualized way. And if I step up from the detail to my summary page of that same piece of plant, there's a lot less information being thrown at the operator and uh, there's a lot less visual noise. And we can see this sort of cool gray, more um, calming, screen layout with these contextualized bars again. Slightly different to the KPI screen where we'd got bars with deviations from the optimum set point and, and links. And there it's very easy to see that you're aiming for a, a dead straight line. Um, in this second screen example, we've taken a different view showing perhaps a more conventional bar. But again, we're, we're layering over that, the, the key operating window. But once again, you can jump from that to the, uh, the, the normal PCS7 faceplate for the object in question. So if we're thinking about how all of the APG graphical information is put together, then if I just switch from that to the graphics designer, basically APG provides a number plot. The, you've got the basic background of the spider plot. And then uh, this object you define with the number of legs you want. And then for each leg, you put one of these blocks in place indicating which type of object it's linked to. They don't necessarily need to be organized around the plot in, in the normal way, so long as they're associated with the spider plot, then in runtime, the runtime system will automatically distribute these um, equally radially around the spider plot. We also have the, the bar objects um, and these overlays which can add the PCS7 alarm conditions from the corresponding technology object, whether it's a, a PID loop or an analog alarm block um, or something, or a, an analog valve, something like that. So this relatively limited set of building blocks, you don't, there's not an awful lot you need to be working with from an engineering point of view. And what's even more limited, you might say, are, are um, simple. Another way of looking at it is the, um, the library for the controller. So when we look in the library that's supplied, there is just one block, which uh, you can then add into your configuration code. And we'll look at an example of that here with this CFC. So we've got a PID block and the, the HMI connector block, this APG connector basically has one connection from your technology block, as I say, whether it's a, an analog alarm block or a PID, something that's typically an analog point, and uh, that is read into this HMI connector block. And then on the connector block, you can specify what range you're going to show on, whether it's the bar or the spider leg or whatever in, in your um, operator's runtime screen. Is that going to be showing the full measurement range? Is it going to be displaying the alarm range of the, the technology block? Is it going to be showing a specifically 
configured um, operating range. And then there are values down here where you can either specify special ranges for the APG indication. You certainly need to do that for the operating range or and very often it will actually read those ranges through this connector from the corresponding technology block. So this can be used with any block. You can use it with a an own block if you need to, but certainly where it's used with a conventional PCS7 library block, then it will recognize the block type and will read um, the range and the alarms um, from the block and, and save configuration effort. So there's not a huge amount to do to uh, to configure APG in that way. So then when we come back to the runtime, you're basically linking the graphical objects for APG to the A APG connector, and then uh, that will automatically associate it with the corresponding technology block. So APG offers these objects that need some configuration and that configuration is obviously going to need to have some uh, requirement for consultation on with the process people to understand what the key operating values are what those uh, operating ranges are for different phases and it could be that uh, for example, in a batch process, which is recipe driven, you could then find that the bars here, the ranges are changing from, from hour to hour based on where you are in, in the batch process and, and what the, the, the current stage of the process could be. And you could then be dynamically writing to the APG connector block to optimize those points. Alternatively, if you've got more of a, a steady state plant, uh, one of the more recent additions is uh, this normalize function where there's uh, some graphics building blocks that you can build into the process screen. And it could be that you then get the, the plant tuned, you, you bring the, the plant into optimum operating conditions. And then with a normalize button, you could click on uh, the normalize function on the screen and it would then effectively center the current operating point um, in a working range. And so you'd then get your ideal operations were as good as we're going to get now. Or in the case of linked bars like this, you'd have a nice straight line with no deviations. And then over time, you would be able to very quickly uh, determine deviation from that optimum. And this is where APG started. And uh, for a APG had these graphical building blocks. And then what we've done over the years is we've added to APG functionality. And one of the things we've uh, added more recently to APG is a functionality called the group display. Now, for those who've been working in DCS for years and years, this is something that the, uh, I'd say the classic DCS of, of 20, 30 years ago would have had as a standard. And then as we've moved into Windows systems, the, the group display, the group function has um, is quite often got lost, uh, but it's something which is nevertheless of value. And I can demonstrate the group display on this screen here. The group display is a, uh, an automatically built up combination of mini faceplates. So here, by <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm, I'm control right clicking to add um, devices to the group display. I could be adding devices, motors, valves. I can be adding analog measurements. Um, got a, another motor here, another motor there. A couple more measurements. You'll see it grows, and you can build up this grouped set of objects. That group can then be saved, and uh, so I can uh, call this Tech Talk 2020. Save that, and then that could be recalled at a later time. And one of the uh, buttons on the screen template is a button that allows you then to recall a group display, or you could recall it from an existing group display. So uh, here's a, another one that I uh, had created on another occasion, and it's got a, a different set of objects in there. 
Once you've got your group display, what you can then do is from any of the objects in the display, you can open the uh, faceplate of the object. But you can also use the, um, actually I'll go back to the group display I created for today, the logic matrix area one. You can use the uh, APL functionality of, of right clicking. So for example, if I right click on the valve here, I can then use the open command and that opens this valve or uh, close. Similarly, I could uh, start one of the pumps up here. So group display gives you a convenient way of grouping lots of objects together. Maybe if you have to manually start a number of things which are perhaps not all on the same screen, you can group them together in a group display and uh, that would give you a quick way of accessing those. What it also does is it gives you a grouped filtered view of uh, alarms and, and, and alarm history and events associated with the objects in the group. So now we can see my uh, opening and closing of the, the valve and the starting and stopping of the, the pump. So you automatically get that filtered list um, from the alarm and event history. And uh, it also gives you a view of the operator notes associated with objects and allows you to add notes. So if, for example, I was to go into the motor here, go to the notes view, I could add a, view, a note. Um, and activate that note. And we'll see that has now appeared in the notes view. And similarly, if I was to come down here, I could add another note against the object and activate the note against the object in the group display. And that will uh, make another of the objects on the screen uh, become, uh, have the note attachment to it. So the, uh, the measurement here. So the group display is a, a real productivity help for operators, very simple to use, and there's no real engineering associated with it to, to get the added value of the group display. The final uh, additional functionality which I'd like to show you is another of the, if you like, zero engineered solutions, um, nearly zero, let's say. And in the template screen, you'll see these buttons here for the quadrant displays. And uh, what I've done in, in my system was to um, link that uh, or move that button to my button bar. And with the quadrant display, you can click on the middle of the button and it will recall a quadranted set of process screens. So uh, you can store the, a, a pointer to a screen for each of the quadrants. And you do that if I wanted to, for example, change this overview to uh, my distillation overview screen, then all you need to do is simply click on that quadrant while you've got that the screen in question on your monitor, and it will then post that screen into the quadrant you've clicked on. So at any time, you can modify the makeup of your quadrants. And this is really leveraging the fact that since version nine of PCS7, all of our process screens have been uh, scalable vector graphics based and you can still pick up on faceplates from the, uh, the the quadrant displays that you can still action the, the objects in there. So uh, they're fully functional. You've just got uh, more of an overview. And you can imagine if you've got a, a big display wall or a, uh, a projector or something like that, this would be a, a great tool for, for getting a, a large overview of the, the process, especially if the screens themselves that you're posting into these quadrants been built up with the uh, advanced process graphics um, optimized representation. Once you've got the uh, quadrants there, if you then decided you did want to go straight to one of the screens, so if I wanted to go to this reactor overview, then you can uh, right click on that quadrant of the button and that will take you to the screen in question. So that concludes my live demo piece and uh, what I'd like to do now is to hand back to Dom, who's going to just 
talk about one last part of the, uh, the, the quadrant display picture. Yeah, so, yeah, so as, you as you mentioned, mentioned Dave, Dave um, um, you alluded to that. that. Sorry, Sorry, I'm echoing in my microphone. Do you mind pausing? Cheers. Um, yeah, so now PTS7 supports 4K screens, which means we can use massive large monitors for your operator station. So what Dave was talking about there with the quad quadrant display can now be displayed on a large screen and you can have the benefits of having these APG, APG graphics in each four quadrants of the screen. So you can have the most relevant information for your operators to use whilst they're operating their plant. So I hope you've enjoyed the presentation today.